it's Cathy. So I'm actually here on site at the River Kiko. So we've already had a little think about what makes a healthy river. So what makes a healthy river? We want some nice meanders. We want lovely clean gravel in the bottom of the river. We want lots of nice trees and long vegetation along the side of the river. At the River Kikol, about 20 years ago, this area was originally mined. When they finished mining, they lined the river with plastic because they dumped lots of the mine waste. So they were worried that some of the, the pollution from the mine waste might get into the river. So they actually lined the river with plastic. But we now know what happens when plastic gets into the water, don't we? Which we'll have a little think about later. But unfortunately, this plastic over those 20 years has broken up. The river has sort of eroded underneath. So there's huge sections of the river where it's just plastic. There's no gravel or anything. There's plastic river banks so that nothing can grow there. Nothing can make their home in there. So we are planning to restore this river and take it back to a proper nice healthy river. So we're removing all the plastic and before we do that we need to remove all the fish that are in living in the river so we've been breaking it down into sections and doing electro fishing i'm not sure if you remember from the very first lesson i briefly talked a little bit about the electro fishing here this is a, a small section that they did last summer and here you can see the river's making a natural meander there it's creating some nice pools great for some of the older trout and hopefully we're going to get some salmon up here and then some nice fast flowing riffles where we're going to have lots and lots of oxygen so lots of and things. Okie dokie. So today we are going to find out about the River Kiko and the restoration project there. Have another think about plastic pollution and learn about ecosystems and food chains. So the River Kiko, the River Kiko joins the River Ian just above Longlands Lake. Can you remember what it's called where two rivers meet, that point where the, the two join? It's a confluence. Well done if you remembered that from lesson one. So what makes a healthy river? If you've watched all the episodes so far, I'm pretty confident you will all know what makes a healthy river. So we want lots of natural meanders, don't we? Lots of bends and wiggles. Lots of lovely trees and long vegetation along the river bank. Some deep pools, clean gravel, no pollution, and some riffles as well. So areas where it's slightly shallower, the water's moving faster, and it's creating all that lovely oxygen for the animals that live in the river. So a river is an ecosystem. So an ecosystem is made up of a community of all living organisms. So plants, animals, microbes, along with non-living parts of their environment. So the air, water, soil. They're all linked. So if one thing changes, it can affect everything else. So here we have a river ecosystem and at the moment it's a fully functioning ecosystem. It has everything in there to make everything support each other. It's a really healthy river. But if we remove one thing, shall we see how it affects the other things? Let's remove the sand and gravel from the bottom of the riverbed. Now, if there's no sand and gravel, there'll be no invertebrates because all the lovely invertebrates live in that gravel. There'll also be no freshwater mussels because they live in that gravel, don't they? They bury into that gravel and filter the water. Now, if there's no invertebrates, there'll be no dippers. Can you remember those lovely birds that dive down into the water and feed off the invertebrates at the bottom? Also, there'll be no fish if there's no invertebrates. And if there are no fish, there'll be no otters. 
So can you see, just by removing one part of that ecosystem, it affects everything else. So in that ecosystem, we have the vegetation and algae in the water. And that's eaten by some of the little invertebrate larvae. Those invertebrates are eaten by the fish. And the fish are eaten by kingfishers. So the vegetation and things is the producer. The little invertebrates are the prey. And the fish and the kingfisher are predators. And that kingfisher is the top predator. And those three are called consumers. This is called a food chain. So in a healthy ecosystem, you should have a proper food chain where everything supports everything else. So let's go back to the river Kekel. The river Kekel was lined with plastic about 20 years ago. Over the years, the river has eroded to expose a lot of the plastic. This means there are areas of the river with no gravel. So can you remember what happens to the ecosystem if we remove the gravel? There are also no plants. Plants can't grow on the side of the river. And there's no place, because the bank is made of plastic, there's no areas for animals to build their homes in the river bank. So this is a photograph of the River Kekel. And can you see all that plastic? So a huge part of that river, that plastic has been exposed and you can see there's no gravel there. So there's no invertebrates, which doesn't support any life in the river. And here that's a good picture as well. Can you see the river's actually started eroding underneath the plastic? So if we have a think about pollution again, so water pollution is when waste like chemicals or other particles cause a body of water to become harmful to the fish and animals that need that water to survive. So plastic pollution, 300 million tonnes of plastic is made each year, 40% is only used once. In 30 years, scientists think that plastic in the ocean will outweigh fish. And 100,000 animals are killed each year from plastic. And one in three sea turtles has eaten plastic. 90% of seabirds have eaten plastic. So this is just a very small section of the River Kekel where the plastic has been removed. Look at all that plastic. Now that plastic was breaking down, it was being eroded and it was being washed further downstream and small microplastics and plastic particles were found further downstream. So they were making their way into the River Ian, where we've got those beautiful, important freshwater mussels, and then eventually out into the ocean. And this is a picture of the river with the plastic removed. So the plastic's just been removed. So it looks a little bit bare along those river edges at the moment, but very soon nature will return We'll get lots of long vegetation there, trees, we're going to plant some trees and then we'll have lots of vegetation, lots of clean gravel which means lots of invertebrates, so it means lots of fish and dippers and kingfishers and otters and we'll have a beautiful healthy river ecosystem. So activities for you to do. Create an ecosystem graph for a woodland habitat. So think about the producers, so the plants and the consumers, the animals, the prey and the predators. And then create a food chain of your choice. Okay, everybody, look forward to seeing you in our next River School episode.